am Chairman and CEO of the Australian Institute of Water Sciences, both in Australia and India, as well as a frequent lecturer in environmental physics at various schools, institutions and universities. To begin, I would like to remind you about what AIWS India does and our vital inclusion in the environmental and sustainability space in India. India, like most nations on Earth, is facing an environmental crisis, predominantly in the area of water security. India is prone to severe droughts as experienced throughout its history. India's drought prone area has increased by 57% since 1997. Drought has affected nearly two-thirds of the country from 2020 to 2022. Over the last decade, one-third of India's districts has experienced more than four droughts, and droughts affects 50 million people each year. AIWS India's charter is to address the economic and social hardships caused by water shortages, particularly due to the pollution overuse of groundwater, droughts and climate change. AIWS India is a training organisation comprised of a cohort of the very best minds in wastewater and potable water in treatment in Australia and in India. The charter of the Institute is to foster world's best practice in the provision of potable water training and wastewater management throughout India and overseas. The purpose of this training is to ensure the protection of the environment via efficient and effective wastewater management practices, including wastewater treatment. AIWS India addresses potable water sustainability by providing timely training in water and wastewater treatment that includes municipal and domestic wastewater that is often untreated or poorly managed, such that the outflows are polluting vital tributaries connected to the premier Indian river systems that provide water resources to most of the subcontinent. AIWS India is also a consulting institute prepared to work with government and private industries to ensure compliance is maintained and therefore not only protects the environment but encourages sustainability. At least 65% of the Indian population are domicile and work in rural areas. AIWS India skills training in water and wastewater treatment, as well as environmental remediation projects, provides a clear, unambiguous path for employment opportunities on a large scale. The economic effect is not only the contributions made by working rural citizens, that, but enables rural citizens to remain in their villages and contribute considerably to local economies. Whether you are an institute or university or industry body willing to work with ARWS India in our important training function, please visit our website www.aiwsindia.in and make contact with us. Let's begin with the definition of sustainability. Sustainability is the process of maintaining change in a balanced environment in which the exploitation of resources the direction of investments, the orientation of technological development and institutional changes are all in harmony and enhance both current and future potential to meet human needs and aspirations. As you can appreciate, is that intrinsic to this definition is the concept of circular economy. And in this context, we are considering one of the pillars of circular economy philosophy namely water. Society can no longer waste potable water. Recycling of wastewater is a vital component in sustainable potable water management and the circular economy. Water is one of the world's most vital resources. It is critical to the survival of every living creature on this planet. Around 771 million people in the world live without access to clean water. This represents nearly one in 10 people worldwide. That is nearly half of the entire population of India. The majority of these people live in isolated rural areas and spend many hours every single day walking to collect water for their families. So what can we do in terms of a circular economy business model? Access to clean water improves access to education, income 
and health and the economy generally. Water reclamation is the process of harvesting either domestic or industrial wastewater or natural runoff from rainwater. For example, road or curb collection reservoirs, buildings for industrial buildings, domestic buildings, parks and gardens, and domestic wastewater. Now let's consider wastewater treatment. Wastewater material in domestic wastewater is generally organic or biogradable which means that microorganisms can use this mat matter as their food source. A biological wastewater treatment system makes use of bacteria and other microorganisms to remove up to 95% of the organic matter. So let's consider different applications of wastewater treatment. Firstly, municipal waste treatment that's centralized. Secondly, municipal wastewater treatment that's decentralized. And thirdly, private wastewater treatment facilities that apply to industry and domestic situations. Centralized systems can be wasteful as water is lost during long distance travel between the source and the treatment facilities. For current centralized wastewater treatment, steps can be feasibly done to meet the definition of sustainability. The general idea is to retrofit centralized municipal wastewater treatment plants and or to implement decentralized wastewater treatment to treat industrial commercial wastewater for example in the hospitality industry. For current centralized wastewater treatment steps can be feasibly done to meet the definition of sustainability. The general idea is to retrofit centralized municipal wastewater treatment plants and or to implement decentralized wastewater treatment units to treat industrial or commercial wastewater for example, in the hospitality industry. Decentralized facilities can treat water almost at the source and deliver recycled water to local communities. Private small footprint domestic or industrial package plants means private individuals or businesses can install package plants near to the source of the wastewater and where the recycled water is used. For example, small footprint aerators allows for small-scale treatment plants for individual societies. Not only does the small footprint recycling produce the main vital water resource, but it also produces other resources, such as methane, that can be used to run the plant or sold to large energy traders as credit towards electricity. In this example, we can see digesters that produce methane gas that is used to run the treatment plant. Sludge from drying beds can be collected for reuse in other areas of the economy. For example, drying beds produce dried sludge that is used as composting for farming. These goals can be met with the use of advanced and innovative wastewater treatment technologies for these applications. For example, this one from Genesis, which has a small footprint and easily run and maintained. In fact, this is perfect for societies where land values are at a premium and scarce. If we consider modular systems, pre-engineered modular components such as different air blowers, flow equalization tanks, aeration tanks, sludge holding tanks, wastewater clarifiers and disinfectant units allow for the package plants to be sized specifically for the customer's application. They can be designed to handle a variety of influent flow rates and BOD loadings to meet discharge requirements. This sort of package plant is ideal for reclaiming rainwater runoff from roads and parks. In terms of the circular economy, the design and production of package plants offers an enormous opportunity for manufacturing. Of course, none of this is ever successful without public policy, education and skills training. Public policy is the domain of government However, government decisions are guided by the public. A well-educated public in areas of sustainability and the benefits of the circular economy will necessarily and positively influence public policy. The onus on education and skills training remains with institutions and universities such as AIWS India and DY Patil University right here in Navi Mumbai. Designers and operators of these water reclamation systems will benefit enormously by forming partnerships with training and consulting organizations 
like AWS India and AIWS Australia as well as DY Patil University. So finally, thank you again for your participation. I look forward to those of you who are interested in sustainability and circular economy business models in the skills training and education sector to contact me as soon as possible. You may reach out to me via WhatsApp or get my details from our website or contact Assistant Professor Snail Oval from D.Y. Patil University School of Hospitality and Tourism Studies. There is much to do to obtain water security in India and skills training will play a major role. The opportunities for business are enormous. Please join me in making this happen. Thank you very much.